Hey everybody, it's Lisa from Shabby Road Studio. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to just do an enjoyable and relaxing masterboard. Because, well, I was playing a little bit this morning on my jelly plate because I wanted to just make some little background, just collage fodder, I guess. Um, and then I have some extras here. You know, you recognize those. My little, my new little uh, vintage Webster dictionary. My um, phone book I got. Some music paper. And then, of course, another piece of player piano. But anyway, these are just some fodder I made. It's not anything on its own. Just some colors I wanted to work with. This one I particularly like. These are colors that I like. This was just an experiment with some stamps on some yellow. I thought maybe I would use something of this in my bee journal. And this one is probably my favorite. I did the stamping. Um, it's just, there's so many layers involved in this piece right here. So it'll be fun. It'll be fun for collage fodder. So let's gather up these and get them out of the way. This piece is the piece we're going to start with. So it's just an eight and a half by 11 and it's cardstock. It's not super thick. I didn't want something super thick because we're going to add layers to it, obviously, as a master board. You probably have all made a master board. If you haven't, you've probably seen a million made. So this is just a kind of a relaxing video for a Monday, getting back into the groove of things. So. Um, I think what I want to start with is the pieces of the backgrounds that I made this morning. So I just, uh, off camera, I just cut off all the white borders from these. It was bugging me because I want to be able to just rip a piece off. I don't want to mess with those white borders. So I just cut them off. So this is what we're left with. And, oh man, it's so pretty. But we're just gonna start ripping. We're just gonna start ripping and pasting. So I've got some Mod Podge over here, but I also did put in some of the coffee water just to brown it up a bit. And not that it's gonna show that much, but um, if it, you know, if I do go over the top, I thought that would be nicer than just plain Mod Podge. Hmm. Just trying to see. I'm trying to figure out if I want to go over it right now. Maybe. Okay. Just ripping pieces off. And this is going to wrinkle a little bit because it's, you know, it's wet, wet glue. I'm not doing it with um, a glue stick. But once it's dry, it should flatten out. It should lay flat. We're just going to alternate through. And get this back covered up. And then we'll add some more on top. So yeah, it's just kind of like a relaxing, not really much thought into it. I don't know if we'll use this for anything today or if that'll just be another video. So like maybe tomorrow after this is all dry and flat, but for today, we're just going to play with some ripping some pieces. Let's do some more of this yellow. I 
I think master boards, um, I don't know, they're so, they're unique every time, so it's, you know, I can do a master board, you can do a master board, they never turn out the same, but that's the cool thing, is when you are done with it, and then you can add something on top of it, like sometimes stamping, or, um, let's grab a piece of this green. And together, when it's all placed together, that's the thing I like. And then when you're um, cutting it apart to use it for uh, whatever you're going to use it for, that's where the magic happens, right? Because it becomes a totally different piece of art at that point. There's just something about making backgrounds with the jelly plate. I think I've said this before, and I sometimes repeat myself, but you just can't beat a jelly plate background because it's so unique each and every time. And you get these, I don't know, you could put the same paint on just a piece of paper with a brush, and you're not going to get anything close to what you can get with a jelly plate. There's something magical about it, folks, and I, I love it. Uh, let's put you there. I got busy this weekend. I did not make it to my any estate sales because, um, I had, I had company both days, so that is always a good thing. Always a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think we need some more yellow down here. I like the way that came out, actually. It's just, you know, the stamping. I'll do that again when I'm going to just save it and use it for something. Wow. Eight and a half by 11. Not a huge background to work with for a master board, but I didn't want to take, you know, all day to do this. So we're just going to work with this and then hopefully make something cool out of it in the next video.
And I'm not going to worry about the straight lines or the little bit of white because we're going to fix all that. We're going to fix all that. Come on, stay put. Stay put. We're just going to do that. I'm going to layer this. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but let's just let's just wait to judge this until it's all dry and we're all finished. Okay, we're gonna use this piece again. Stop. Go tell my dogs to be quiet. They were starting to howl at something they heard outside. <laughs> and yeah. When one starts, then they all go. I'm just trying to rotate these so that I get, I guess it's time to use a piece of this. I'm trying to just, you know, evenly use them. Giving them all a chance to have a part in this. Oops. Yeah, let's go like that. and the roosters. I can't seem to get a video done without some calamity in the background. I apologize. which is making me a little crazy because that bugs me, but I'll cut it off. It will be cut off and trimmed when I'm done. Okay, so we just got this section, a little bit piece here. Let's fix that right now. Let's go with that. This is a messy project, if you haven't noticed. I mean, it doesn't, I don't know. It's messy when I do it, let's just say that. I don't do anything non-messy, I guess. Some people just prefer to use like glue sticks for this, um, and that's fine. I just, I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith in those glue sticks sticking. And so this, you can kind of go over the top too and just kind of seal it down. I guess that's why I do it this way. I like to seal that layer on top. Just kind of go, kind of smooth out that, those lumps of Mod Podge. Yeah, okay. What do we need, what do we need, what do we need? Do we need another yellow? Yeah, I like the yellow. I like this yellow piece with the stamps on it. It's kind of fun. But again, a lot of this will be covered up too in a minute when we start our next layer. So, oh, oops. That didn't go like I wanted it to do. Yeah. 
And let's see. I have that there, so we won't use that. Oops, maybe this. No, I just did that. Okay. Maybe this one. Hmm. Kind of like that shape. A little bit more on top. Do we have all of our spots covered except for right there? Okay, so it's sticking to me now. Okay, let's take that out so we can see better. That is what we have. I know it looks like a shambled up mess, but let's dry it and see what we Okay, do. so I am done drying this. Now it is, you know, it's shiny from the Mod Podge, which is a fine. I think it brings out the colors of the background. And, you know, I just realized why I like masterboards, because like this, I am a fan of quilts. <laughs> and it's sort of the same thing, you know, piecing pieces together to make a something new I guess so you might take see a piece of fabric that you're like Ugh, that is not fabric I would ever use but cut in small pieces added to a bigger project it comes out um, cool so let's turn this over I got to get those edges cut because it's it's driving me a little crazy you know I'm not OCD or anything I just uh, yeah that bugs me a little, little, just a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to cut those off just to stay within the, there, that is better. So now, um, this is where like these pieces come in. I'm going to use some of these pieces. So this is a piece that we used from the other day. I just want to stick a few of these randomly and this little pieces so this is perfect that's why I say don't ever throw anything away good grief I can always use it for something else um, although if you see my craft room right now you might think I need to throw a few things away so let's just get some on the sponge kind of Yeah, this is so fragile. I mean, once it's stuck down, it's fine. We're just going to randomly place some bits and pieces to add some text to this background. I might not be able to do it like this. But I was hoping just to get it on these pieces and not all over. I want to go over the tops of them. There. I guess we'll just do it that way. What do you guys use? So tell me in the comments what do you guys usually use your master boards for after you're done? Like, I mean, you've seen some of my videos before. I usually cut them up into tags. Pretty much, that's what I've used them for. But I'm curious, like, what do you guys do with them? Do you specifically make them for a project or just make them, like, just to have... I uh, just like to hear other people's um, opinions and find out what you guys do with them. Okay, let's get this down here. They keep moving, but that's okay. Okay, so we're done with that one. Let's bring in the old telephone book. 
What I thought we would do is um, use something from the use a piece of the old um, name, you know, the name directory. Okay, I don't need this whole piece, so let's just rip that. Uh, also, let's get a ruler and just kind of try to stay somewhat straight with this. Yeah, right. Somewhat straight as she rips a big, weird... Okay, and then just trying to get like little small chunks. Little did these people know that years later, their phone numbers would be in a piece of art <laughs> used on a YouTube video. I always think of those things. It's Go to these estate sales and you're like, what could I make with that? What could I make with that? Oh, so I have to address the whole, uh, I had a couple people that were a little bent. Um, they got a little bent out of shape a little bit about me using the vintage sewing pattern that I cut up in one of my last videos. Um, to, you know, I appreciate your comments but again, I mean, it's definitely my pattern to do with, you know, what I want. And, you know, most of the time those patterns and the pieces are not even all there. You know, they've been, they're old. So part of the pieces are missing, which really doesn't do anybody any good. You can't really, they're not good for resale if there's pieces missing. Um... People don't usually make the outfit if there is a main piece missing. So anyway, um, I'm going to keep on using vintage sewing patterns because I think they're awesome. And I mean, you know what? They're, they're getting another life in a different way. So just keep on using patterns. Keep on using vintage patterns, people. But it's kind of like when I did the video on how to reuse a vintage book cover. So I don't, and got a little bit of people's feathers ruffled at that point. But you can't make everybody happy, I guess. I just think that if something is being reused into something else, then... You know, it's getting a new life. Why do you care how, how it got, you know, a new life? Um, yeah. So that's all. That's all I'll say about that. Okay, so as you can see, just adding these little bits kind of like adds a little, another coolness, another layer of cool to this masterboard. Um, let's see. So I wanted to... Oh, okay. I'm going to use a piece of this again. I'll set that to the side. I want to use these um, holes, though. So we're going to rip the, the plain piece off. And then we will go like this. Who knew that you could just use these for so many things? I don't. I mean, once you just start thinking about it, I'm surprised I haven't got any comments from anybody on using these yet, ripping them up. Okay. So let's bring our master board back over. We'll just rip that down the where the holes were. Ooh. 
this is pretty thin. It will just kind of blend. I think it's going to just kind of blend into the background, but it gives that texture from those holes, which is the part I like. Um, and of course, the paper is a great color because it's that, you know, tan vintage look paper. Uh, let's see. I should use that size. Maybe a couple more. Okay, so that's all of our piano paper we'll use. I think I'm gonna dry it. I have dried this, and then I thought, what if, what if we sprayed just a little bit of, this is antique linen, just to give it some splatter. This one is mica spray. And now we will dry those. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I want to do some stamping. And sometimes I'll do like uh, specific like birds or something like that. But right for this one, I want to just do these shapes. So. Sometimes it's nice just to have some, you know, just some abstract shapes on here. And you don't know how they're going to get cut up. I mean, but part of it will be in your creation when you cut it. And it just kind of adds a little unique spin. Okay, and then I got a circle, because I like the circles. I like these circle stamps. You can do them separate, you can overlap them. I mean, I won't go too crazy, but you can go off, off the side like that. that off the side so just an added dimension to the background of the master board so I'll show you up close you can see all the layers all the colors now the splatters are added in there so today that's where we're gonna end um, on the next video we'll we'll cut it up We'll make something out of it. Tell me in the comments what you do with your master boards. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.